welcome to today's press conference for the General Tire World Championship. Today's sudden death round winner went out first, hit that 20 pound cut weight, Greg Hackney. Greg, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, so I think if you look in the dictionary and you look up grind, the, there's going to be a video of today there because that's what it was for all of you out there. You know, no one seemed to be figuring it out at the beginning. Fish just weren't biting. Um, can you just talk to us about what happened? Uh, you know, actually, when we got out there this morning and Randy, you know, comes around, brings us the map and, you know, you kind of get a visual of the lake, how it looks. It looked really good. Uh, and then when he set the cut weight, what I considered low, really low for Florida, uh, I, I, it was really scary because I thought, wow, if this is going to be one of those deals, if you don't get dialed in in the first 15 minutes, you know, with this group of anglers, you know, you're going to be packing back to the hotel and it's not going to be good times. Uh, but it did. You know, actually, it turned out to be a grind, which really, honestly, was really good. And uh, it was just one of those deals today. I just kind of went fishing. Got just enough bites to keep me doing stuff, and I got far enough ahead I was able, like, at the end, you know, to kind of try some new stuff and was able to go out. I, I'll be honest with you. One time today I was like, you know, I was leading. I didn't think, honestly, I didn't know if I would go out, if I would ever hit the cut weight. Uh, and it finally happened. And it's one of those deals – like at the end of the day where I was like, you know, I didn't do really well today. I just done better than everybody else. Yeah. What was it like pulling out that, uh, that final fish that set you over the cut way? You know, it's a funny thing. I swung that fish and it came off and I will, I have received a penalty, which I will serve in the first uh, couple minutes of the championship round. But when I swung the fish over, I, I actually knew the fish. I thought there was a chance it was fixing to come off. It was kind of a, a weird, deal but um i didn't think it was enough i didn't think the fish was quite i was like yeah and they were so hard to come by so this was the deal i was like i'm gonna be like eight ounces short of the 20 pound mark and it was as hard to come up with an eight a eight pounder and an eight ounce one were gonna be just as hard to come by and um uh, fortunate enough it you know it weighed enough and i got to go out but it, it was it was pretty cool because it had been a grind all day and I had just barely, you know, been staying in the lead. And then Annie Montgomery actually caught a four-pounder right before I caught that fish. And he would actually gotten up there pretty close to uh, the weight that I had. And then I caught that fish and went out. But such a relief, honestly, such a relief. Because, you know, last year in the MLF World Championship, I didn't make it through the sudden death round. And uh, I had smoked them the first two rounds. And, and I was fired up. You know, you know, to make it, and we went to the sudden death round, and I struggled. So, uh, very fortunate today. Talk about the differences between the uh, your elimination round and today, because the elimination round was a stressful. There was a lot of fish caught, a lot of good fish, and you were in a situation where you had you know three or four guys who were right on top of each other. And then today, when it was just pretty sluggish right to start. I mean, compare compare the two of those if you don't mind. Well, you know, basically in the, the, the last elimination round, I went in with like 11-pound deficit. You know, so only two guys are going to make it out of that round. There are five of us fishing. Only two of them are going to make it. I'm in dead last going into that round, 11 pounds out of first, like nine and a half pounds out of second, and I'm going to have to be first or second, you know, to make it uh, to the sudden death round. And I, I, I got off to a fairly quick start, but I never made up the weight. I caught like the first eight and a half pounds caught in the round, but that still left me like a half a pound down out of second place. And, uh, you know, it finally, Takahiro ended up winning that match. Uh, and Edwin was, me and Edwin, we were just, or Edwin and I were just, every, I caught a five pounder, he catches a five pounder. I catch a four pounder, he catches a four. I mean, we were just fish for fish for fish right till the end of that deal. And uh, honestly, I stayed pretty down all day in that round because I'm like, oh, my gosh. I just never could get ahead of him until finally right there at the end, you know, there was a, about a 45-minute period that he, you know, he went slack. And I finally, you know, was able to, uh, to get around him, got ahead of him, and, you know, and made it today to the deal. I, but, again, today was totally different because, you know, I'm using the score tracker to my advantage. You know, I'm listening to see, you know. 
I caught the first fish today, which it was a small keeper, but still I caught the first fish and I'm listening. Then Annie Montgomery catches one, but then 20 minutes goes by and he doesn't catch another one. And then I catch another one. So I'm like, nobody's figured it out. And uh, honestly, it's a lot more peaceful when that score tracker is not lighting up. Sudden death has always been not necessarily my nemesis because I've, I've done well at times in the sudden death round. But like out of all the rounds, it's the one that I hate the most. <laughs> because the deal is you're so rushed because normal round, it doesn't matter. Maybe you don't catch them the first two periods, but you can catch all that weight in the last period and you can come back and make it. Sudden death, there is a certain amount of weight that you have to have. There's a, le a stress level in sudden death that does not happen in any other round. Major League Fishing is very stressful anyway because of the score tracker and you know what's going on, but sudden death is sudden. It's sudden death for a reason. So it was a full moon last night. Do you think that affected the fish's behavior at all? Uh, you know, we've, we've basically fished on almost a full moon all week, and it's definitely affected the fish. Uh, you know, we're not getting a really early start in the morning, which honestly is, is, is playing to our advantage in that typically on a full moon, you will have a very, very small window of opportunity right at sunrise. And then it really, fishing typically doesn't pick up till 10 o'clock on. And so because we're not starting till eight o'clock in the morning, yeah, we probably miss in a couple minutes, but realistically, because we're fishing later in the afternoon, I think if you look, now I'm not sure about the ramp, the, you know, the, the, you know, the guys who fished on the second day, I don't know how they did, but I think if you look at all the rounds that I fished in, you can tell that fishing got progressively better from 10 o'clock on every day, and that's a full moon situation. And uh, today we also had a cold front that blew in also. That really seemed to have an, a, a negative effect. Like most places, you and it could be because the typically when a front pushes in like that, you know, the fish will feed real aggressively right before. But I think something about the full moon and the cold front kind of shut them down this morning completely you know, when we started. And it never seemed like they got super aggressive. Like all day long, I just had to fish real thorough. Uh, and in the other rounds, when they would turn on in the middle of the day, you just get around them. They boil the water when they got the bait. They were super aggressive. These fish today, they just, they never got like that. They never, and I can, you know, there were guys, you know, there's six of us out there doing all kinds of different stuff. It's not like everything's not getting tried and nobody lit them up. Like even with me, yeah, I, I won the deal, but it took me all day basically to do it. Fish here and a fish there, and you, you just had to fish. You had to fish everything you come by like it had a fish on it to get a bite. And uh, typically earlier in the week it hadn't happened. So honestly, I think that the, the combination of the full moon and the cold front is what really made us struggle today. Excellent. What were your main baits and how did they change throughout the day? Uh, you know, this morning, I'm going to have to think. <laughs> you know, there wasn't a lot of activity early this morning. Uh, you know, I caught the first fish I caught this morning flipping a uh, Strike King shimmy stick, black and blue. Again, I can't stress enough in Florida that black and blue, you, you can just about come to Florida with a black and blue of anything and a June bug of anything, and you're pretty much set in Florida regardless of where you go. Uh, but And something about a straight tail worm in Florida is really big, just a confidence bait. I caught the first fish on that. I caught my second fish on a, a striking hack attack swim jig, black and blue. Um, and then I actually lost a couple fish on it. And so I went back to the shimmy stick because it seemed like they got it so good. And basically I was just rigging it up on a straight shank hook, um, an eighth ounce striking tungsten weight and just flipping cypress trees with it. And those fish I feel like that I was catching on it were either pre-spawn or spawning fish. They were all really healthy. They actually looked like females that were full of eggs. The, the wind has played a big role in fishing this week. Do you think it had some effect on today's fishing? Uh, you know, this morning, the way I was fishing, I re probably really didn't need the wind. And then this afternoon, going out in the last period, I actually threw a, uh, a, a vibrating jig. Strike King has a new vibrating jig called the Thunder Cricket. And uh, I basically matched it with a, bla uh, a Strike King Rage Minnow on the back. And it was the first time today I actually caught fish on a moving bait. Uh, earlier in the day, it seemed like you just had, I just had to crawl that worm around those trees to get them. 
and I got in that wind this afternoon and actually warmed up and clouded up this afternoon and I caught my last four fish on that bladed jig on the Thunder Creek. Greg, when you answered my question, I know you brought up last year and I want to bring it back up again, maybe maybe a little stab to the heart for you. So you set some major league fishing records. You had 117 pounds, 61 fish in your two combined days of fishing. Um, then when we went to the sudden death round, had a 32 pound cut weight and you ended up fifth just outside of that championship cut. How did you feel when that happened last year? And then how does it feel that you won that same round this year? You know, last year, I, honestly, I was totally crushed. <laughs> I mean, I really was. I was so fired up. I'd caught so many fish and was, you know, on a small the, – the cool thing about that deal was, you know, because there's not many of us, we, we were fishing smaller venues or smaller lakes than we – say normally would when there's a hundred guys out there and so the cool thing about those first two rounds were that here I am on a lake I'm sharing a lake with you know five of the best fishermen on the planet and I'm beating their brains out and it's not like there's any secrets because we all can run round and round the circle and look at one another and to figure that out and to be on all but that's fishing this that's this sport to be on an all-time low, I mean on an all-time high, and then go to the sudden death round and basically feel like I fell flat on my face. It's, uh, you know, fishing's a very humbling, this whole deal is very humbling. And uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be, you know, getting an opportunity tomorrow to fish in the championship round. Um, I don't really know how, I mean, I'm fired up. I'm also, this is the other thing people don't realize. When we come off the water, there's such an adrenaline dump. It, it, you just crash and burn. Like, I mean, it, 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 it's so weird. I, you will have so much energy right up till it's over with. And when they say lines in or lines out and it's over, you just, I don't know how to explain it. But so right now I'm on that adrenaline dump. <laughs> in the morning I'll get it all back. Because I, I'll be honest with you, all the guys who do this, the biggest reason they do it, it's, it's not for the money. It's not for anything but the adrenaline rush. This is such an adrenaline rush that if you could bottle, you know, a squincher is good, but if you could bottle what goes on out there on the lake and put it in this bottle, it's priceless. <laughs> uh, so how potentially exciting is a, is a world championship day in this particular area that we're at? Because you don't know where you're gonna fish yet, but but you know what's down here you know where we are so so tomorrow could be potentially one of the one of the most interesting days of fishing that we'll ever see anytime you know basically because we're in florida at this time of the year i know in my rounds we haven't seen it yet but the potential here is to break every record that we've ever set and it doesn't necessarily have to be with 60 bass it can be with 20 bass I mean, we're in a part of the country where you could catch 15 to 20 bass that weigh, that weigh, you know, that weighed 100 pounds. I mean, it wouldn't be out of the question to have 20 bass here that weighed 100 pounds. I mean, it's incredible. We're in the land of the giants. And, uh, you know, you would think it's inevitable that we roll around and fix the hit somewhere on the head here. I mean, this is going to be one of those deals where we could possibly see the biggest weight. I will be honest with you about this. I'm pretty fired up about the championship round. <laughs> I, I, I consider myself a heavy hitter. I'm just really looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to explain that, but I, I like to fish for big ones, and Florida gives me a feeling. There's only a handful of states in the whole nation that give me that, even though today – I didn't catch any big ones. In my mind, mentally, I'm going to catch one on every cast. And there's not very many places in the country that, that do that to me personally, but here's one of those places, and I'll be honest with you, this is a place to swing a hammer. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty fired up just at that. I mean, you know, this thing could get out of hand. <laughs> so what would winning the World Championship mean to you? You know, that I, I honestly don't know what winning the world championship would mean to me. I just want to test it, and, we'll, and, and then I'll be able to tell you. <laughs> it's all, you know, the deal is I know I want to win it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm all in wanting to win it, but I don't know what it will make me feel like until 
I would love to hold that giant trophy. <laughs> so you've been pretty successful with the MLS format so far, but you haven't taken home a cup yet. So is this the event that's going to break that streak? You know, this is a funny thing. Before I came to this press conference, I actually thought about that. I was like, you know, I've never – why not start off with the championship as the place to win? Just go ahead and skip all the rest of it and go all the way to the championship. That's kind of where I'm at with this right now. I'm like, I'm not really concerned about anything that's happened in the past, only worried about the future. Great. Will you change any of your tackle tomorrow going into the championship round, I think? Uh, no, I really haven't. I uh, I basically just kind of retied everything this afternoon when I finished the round. Um, every round I've done something different. And so basically, I don't have any idea, you know, what I'm going to do till we go to wherever we're going. Like today, I, if I, I caught all my fish today off of Cypress Street, never caught a fish off of any vegetation whatsoever. And if you'd have told me that coming into this, I'd be like, no, nah, it's never going to happen. Vegetation has played a, you know, a factor. The first round, you know, I caught my fish over hydrilla. The second round, it was about reeds. Today, it was about cypress trees. It's been a different lure each time. I mean, who knows? It's Major League Fishing. I, you don't ever know where you're going until you get there. <laughs> so I got about 20 rods, basically the same 20 rods I've had all week, the same tackle. I didn't add anything. I didn't take anything out. I'm, uh, I feel like I have the winning lure. Now, if I pick it or not tomorrow will be my choice, but I feel like I'm carrying the winning lure without a doubt. All right, we know you have a lot of stuff to get on to do, so just one last question. You know, last year in the championship round, Bobby Lane, Mark Davis, Jeff Creek, Kevin Van Dam, huge names, you know, huge performance, outstanding show. This year, Mike Iconelli, Andy Montgomery, Skeet Reese, and Greg Hackney. That's a stacked field. Seems uh, much stronger this year, to be uh, honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just saying that last year's group seemed kind of weak. Yeah, I, I think there's a certain person missing. So how do you feel about this Final Four, about competing against those three guys, and about your chances for tomorrow? Oh, I mean, I feel good. I mean, anytime you get to this point, you can't help but feel good. I mean, again, this is a very humbling deal because I've already beat some of the best guys on the planet to get to this point. So. If it's my time to win, I feel like it's going to happen tomorrow. All right, awesome. Well, we wish you the best of luck Thank tomorrow in the much. championship round on whatever lake it might be on. Uh, have a great round, and congratulations again on your sudden death win. Thank you.